In this first lecture on vitamins, I'll be introducing you to uh, differences between water-soluble and fat-soluble vitamins, and then we will go on to explore the details of each that you should know for your exams. First, we'll take a look at the common features of water-soluble vitamins. First of all, they are hydrophilic, uh, hence the reason that they are water-soluble, uh, which means that we need them only in small amounts and that any excess is going to be excreted in the urine. So rarely will we see a uh, toxicity of water-soluble vitamins, but more likely a deficiency because there are no backup stores in the body. The exception to this rule are in uh, vitamin B12 and B9, which are stored in a fairly significant amount in the liver so that they are available for future use. So let's take a quick look at all of the vitamins, water-soluble vitamins that we'll be covering. This is all the Bs as well as the vitamin C. And you have names associated with each, but let me caution you or let you know that these names and numbers are not things that you need to match together anytime they mention on your exam one or the other. Both pieces will be there. Of course, by the time you're done with learning these vitamins, you probably will know the names as well as the letters associated with them for each. Anyway, we will then cover details of fat-soluble vitamins. Fat-soluble vitamins, there are many less of them, so uh, much less to handle there. They are all hydrophobic, and hence the fact that they are fat-soluble. Again, necessary in small amounts. Any excess here will be stored in the liver or fat. Because they are stored in the liver or fat, we can actually experience toxicities uh, with fat-soluble vitamins, but uh, deficiencies are much less common because uh, there's gen generally three to six months worth of storage uh, in the fat and liver tissues. So, uh, water soluble vitamins, water soluble, fat soluble vitamins, fat soluble, simple enough, right? Here's how I remember my uh, fat soluble vitamins. Uh, you can either remember that they are all of the vitamins that are not. B and C, or you can remember them as A, K, E, and D. Uh, again, the names are always going to be associated with the letters. In the case of fat-soluble vitamins, the actual name can change dependent on the form of the particular vitamin. For example, we might have uh, vitamin D2 or D3. Uh, D3 is the cholecalciferol. And uh, the way that I remember these is by imagining a big fat lady laying on the beach uh, <laughs> naked. So N, we add that in there, and then A, K, E, and D, and I can sort those out. Uh, pretty good visual to keep that in mind. Uh, I've used that with students. It seems to work. So big fat lady laying on the beach, stuff an N in front of it, and you've got, uh, or naked fat lady laying on the beach. Uh, can't include a picture here, so <laughs> that's all good. I'm sure you will keep that in your memory now. The key here with uh, absorption for fat-soluble vitamins is they are fat-soluble, and so they are generally going to be bound up in fats, which means that we require pancreatic enzymes in order to absorb them, right? They're absorbed via chylomicrons in the small intestine. So any disorder that interferes with pancreatic enzymes will create issues with absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. Now, if you have a decrease in fat absorption, clearly, as we covered, you'll have a decrease in fat-soluble vitamin absorption. Also, if you have a, a decrease in fat absorption, one of the main symptoms is, guess what? Well, one of the main symptoms is steatorrhea. Maybe you haven't heard that word, maybe you have. Uh, but that ends up meaning basically greasy stool, so fat in the stool. Uh, steatorrhea can result uh, or can be a, a good indicator that someone may have problems uh, with the pancreas or fat absorption and or and potentially uh, fat-soluble vitamin absorption. So oily stool, 
Uh, it smells really bad, uh, bad symptom to have. Anyway, uh, many of the causes of steatorrhea are here in the table. As you can see, most of them relate to issues with the pancreas or, for example, with Crohn's disease and celiac disease, absorption across uh, the intestine. So uh, cystic fibrosis, it comes up because with cystic fibrosis, we have a decrease in, um, in fluids. So we have the stickiness, which actually inhibits the secretion of pancreatic enzymes. So that's one of the symptoms also of cystic fibrosis is a decrease in fat absorption. And so keep in mind that anywhere we're talking about absorption issues, we could have a problem with any of the vitamins, but particularly uh, any issues of the pancreas, we can have an issue with absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So on that note, I'd like to share with you uh, an interesting situation. You can see in the above image uh, that fat digestion uh, occurs normally using the enzyme lipase, right, secreted from the pancreas, and it breaks the fatty acid chains away. There are a number of drugs on the market presently for uh, prescribed and uh, over-the-counter for weight loss uh, that all fall under the umbrella of Orlistat. Now, what Orlistat does is theoretically cuts the amount of fat absorbed in half, and so we see that it interferes with the lipase enzyme and leaves the fats intact or triglycerides intact. And I bet that you can guess what one of the major side effects of drugs like Ally or Orlistat are. Uh, well, yeah, you've got it, steatorrhea. Um, not such a great symptom, and whether they're effective or not, uh, potentially they are if you see uh, the patients are having um, increased levels of exercise and reduced caloric intake, so they should definitely uh, be prescribed with uh, lifestyle modifications also. So in short, this was a very brief introduction to the differences between fat-soluble and uh, water-soluble vitamins, and I look forward to seeing you in the next series of lectures as we highlight all the aspects that you need to know for your exams. <music>